The sad truth is what I think we've seen over the past few years is a new kind of economic model taking hold in our countries, one that's focused on redistributionism, on stagnation, and on the imbuing of woke culture into our businesses. I call these people the anti-growth movement, and they come in many shapes and sizes. There are the vested interests who don't want challenge and don't want competition. They've always been there. But they've been joined by socialists and environmental closing, who in the name of combating climate change, insist that we should simply stop virtually every kind of economic activity. And then we have the ESG culture, perpetrated by many in big corporations, where the focus is on hitting a diversity target or hitting a social target, rather than actually generating money for employees and for the country. And of course, this model results in more taxes, it results in more subsidies, and it results in more regulation. I think we can see that with President Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. It's going to cost US taxpayers $400 billion. It's going to encourage US industry to spend their time rent seeking and going to the government for those subsidies. And it's also going to cut competitors out of the market, including companies in the United Kingdom. Another good example is the UK ban on fracking. This is despite the fact that energy costs in the UK are twice what they are in the United States. And what we are now doing is we are buying gas from America, fracked gas. We are freezing it to minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. We're transporting it across the, United, across the Atlantic Ocean, and then we're regasifying it in Britain. Now, why on earth does that make economic or environmental sense? It simply doesn't. Or what about our defense industries that are struggling to get investment because they're not deemed socially acceptable? Just as a time when we are using more weaponry to help support the Ukrainians, our defense industries aren't able to raise the funds they need in all cases because of some of these ESG requirements. Across the board, what we see is it's getting harder and harder to get things done, and it's getting harder to get on. Overall, the Anglo-American model of capitalism is being subverted, and the Heritage Foundation itself, in its own index of economic freedom, has shown that the US and the UK are falling down the league table. And in fact, the US, UK has now fallen behind Germany in terms of our level of economic freedom. I fear that our countries are becoming social democracies by the back door. So we've ended up in a situation following the financial crisis and following COVID, where there was even more money given out and supplied by the government. And in the UK, that amounted to 400 billion pounds. I think in the US, it was $5 trillion we've ended up in a situation where people see the government as the concierge. I've got a problem. I'll call the government. You know, my business is failing. I'll get on the phone and sort it out. My investment isn't doing very well. It's the government's problem. I can't buy a house. I need to call the government. But I can tell you as somebody who's worked in government for many years, that is not the answer, and it's not sustainable. I think if you are somebody who's not worked in government, you perhaps don't understand quite how hard it can be to get things done and to make that change. Boris Johnson said it was like one of those nightmares where you simply can't move your feet. Tony Blair talked about the scars upon his back, and I'd spent many years in government. I knew it would be difficult but I still didn't understand quite how hard. We've allowed our opponents to fill the airwaves. We've allowed them to crowd our campuses and we've allowed them to use our institutions to undermine our values. We share a great heritage of freedom between our two countries. 
you know, the US Constitution, Magna Carta. There are many founding documents that I could mention. But that freedom is being undermined. And of course, we need to be self-critical. We, we should subject ourselves to self-examination. We believe in a free press. But what I think it's come to is self-flagellation. Self-flagellation of the values that made our countries great in the first place. Identity politics, which is basically the idea that what group you're in is more important than the person you are. Critical race theory, which says it's more important how you appear on the surface than what your talents and attributes are. Or the whole debate about what is a woman <laughs> that completely subverts basic principles of science and biology. These are all core beliefs that we have seen being undermined. And I'm afraid there hasn't been sufficient fight back. And I find it ironic that there's so much criticism within our own societies, and yet so many people also trying to migrate to our countries. I know that the United States has problems at the Mexican border. We have problems in the English Channel with small boats. And we're in a situation where people in our own societies appear to be questioning the very value of what we are, whilst others are desperate to get into the country. And it's an extraordinary contradiction. So what can we do about all this? The left have weaponized people's concerns about the economy and environment, using terms like fuel poverty and the climate emergency to justify policies which are anti-growth and socialist. Maybe we should talk about rising taxes as tax poverty and the fact that we have the highest taxes for 70 years as a tax emergency. And maybe rather than a cost of living crisis, what we've actually got is a cost of government crisis. Last autumn, I had a major setback. But I care too much to give up on this agenda. I think it's too important. We need to get real about the threat from authoritarian regimes and their unwitting allies in the anti-growth movement in the West. We need to get organized about taking these forces on. And we need to fight this battle of ideas once again.